Hey there. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add page breaks to core or universal PDF templates. Um, so you can control the spacing and layout of your PDF. Currently got uh, an employment application form up here. Um, number of fields you might expect, contact information, um, availability, previous employer, um, and more info about you. Uh, and that's split over three pages in the form with the page break field. Uh, and if we go and have a look at how that currently looks um, in the PDF, which is already set up, the blank slate template, you can see that the more about you section splits across one of the pages here. Um, so we might put a page break um, right before this section title, um, more about you, so that that's on its own page. And that can be uh, easily accomplished by going to the form and we'll find the field we want the page break on, more about you. And over here on the right sidebar, down to the appearance section, under custom CSS class here, we're gonna put the, the word page break. Now, if you already had a CSS class here, um, maybe you're still using the legacy columns. Um, uh, left half. Um, you could just hit space and put page break after that. Um, and that will still, still work. I'll get rid of that extra class name. I'll hit update. Now, if we refresh the PDF, there'll be a page break um, on the more about you section. Uh, so that's one way you can control uh, the different layout um, and get make sure, well, to help make sure that fields uh, are less likely to be split across multiple pages. Um, now, you might have noticed I didn't put it on the actual page break. Um, gravity form field itself. And I put it on the first element here. Um, it is possible to include it on the page break field, but you have to um, be using named page breaks and you have to enable um, the page title to be shown in the PDF. So I'll just show you how to set that up now. So we're gonna remove the, um, the class from the more about you section. I'm going to hit the page break field and apply it directly to it. Then we're going to go right up the top here and we'll select the first page break field. And this way you control the, the pagination options. It allows you to set things like the prog progress bar um, steps and you can control what that looks like uh, or the color. And then you can set the page breaks here, um, page break names. Personal info. Uh, shop details and about you. We'll hit update now. And now the, um, the form has pages for each individual, uh, sorry, names for each individual page. We'll go up to settings and PDF and just turn on those um, page labels in the PDF. And to do that, we get into the template section and we're gonna enable the show page names option here and hit update. Now when we refresh, you can see here we've got the extra label here for page information and there's the section title. So we might decide we don't want that section title if we're gonna use page names and we can turn that off or remove it. Uh, then we've got job details and here's our about you um, item that's that's on a new page. You can, it's actually a little hard to tell because the previous um, content ran right to the bottom of that first page. So it might've been a natural page break um, there already. Uh, and we could actually just put the job detail um, 
section on its own page as well. Uh, and then the about you section on its own page to, to really split that up and make it no more noticeable. So we'll go back to our form. And we'll select that um, second page break and include that CSS there. And now if we refresh the page again, you can see we've got the personal info on page one, job details on page two, and about you details on page three. Now that um, technique works for most fields in the form, um, with the exception of uh, the hidden field, which doesn't support um, a CSS selector there. Um, in the, it doesn't have an appearance section where you can put a CSS class. And by default, the product field, um, because they are automatically grouped at the end of the um, PDF, exactly like Gravity Forms does on the entry details page. So I'm heading over to an e-commerce form, which has had some product fields here, uh, name, email, billing address, shipping details. So I'll just show you a sample entry. So the PDF will, um, will mimic this flow here that Gravity Forms does by default, which is um, uh, the non-product fields first, and then the product details grouped in the order at the very end. Uh, so I hit view now, and uh, that's how it looks in the PDF. But um, if we wanted to ungroup this product table, so show the products in line where they were in the form editor, um, we would then be able to include a page break on those products. Um, so to ungroup this table, um, it can be done with the Core Booster add-on for Gravity PDF. It's uh, one of our paid extensions, um, which adds a heap of different options and enhancements for Core and Universal PDF templates. Uh, one of those is the ability to ungroup these products. Um, so we'll go to the form settings now, PDF, and we'll hit edit. And under the template tab with the Core Booster add-on enabled, there'll be a number of new options. Um, filter fields allows you to uh, include um, a subset of fields in the PDF, so you didn't have to include them all. Um, control over the, the field label, description, checkboxes, and, and things like that. Um, the one we're interested in is the group products option. So um, by default, all the products are grouped. Uh, we're going to uh, ungroup them now. And if we go and view that PDF again, oh, that's the wrong one. View this PDF again see our product table is gone and our products at the top here are included in the flow in the normal position um, and once it's ungrouped we can include a, a page break um, in them now they're a little bit high up um, normally you would include a page break um, if they're a bit closer to the bottom of the page, but just for demonstration purposes, I'll include it on this second product field here. Okay. And then, um, so we've got our first field and then a page break and our second field um, on the new page. Um, so that's how you, you would add page breaks if you're using product fields in the form. Um, there's also another advanced technique you can use um, if you wanted to add a new page break and change the orientation of the paper or change the paper size. Um, you can use a HTML field with a special um, page break tag, which is specific to the um, PDF engine we use. So I'm going to head back to the employment application form. 
and we'll, um, we'll get rid of these page breaks here. I might decide on page two here. I because of list fields, I want to. Um, I want to display the paper in landscape mode. I'm going to add a HTML block here. I don't want the end user to see this HTML block when they fill out the form. So I'll use the class GF hidden. And that'll hide it from the, from the user who's um, filling out your form. Um, but the PDF can still display this HTML block. Now the general here under content, I'm going to add some um, custom HTML page break. And, and the, for the attribute, I'm going to write sheet size. Uh, and so this particular PDF is in A4. Um, so I'm going to put um, the A4 dimensions, but in landscape mode. So I'll do the width first being 297, and then the height being uh, 210 millimeters. And that's going to display the second page in landscape. Now I want the third page um, back in normal portrait mode. So I'll add a, another HTML field and include the page break again with the sheet size option. And I'll just reverse those back to the standard um, portrait orientation. And we'll hit update. When we view this PDF now, we've got the first page uh, in portrait mode, landscape for the second page, and the third page back to portrait. And you actually see here, this is the, um, the page name um, floating here. So I might go and turn, those, uh, turn that setting off in the PDF so um, it doesn't look out of place. And show page names off. Um, and while I'm here, uh, the show HTML fields is on. Um, by default, when you create a PDF, this is turned off. Um, so for this technique to work with the HTML fields in the PDF, just need to make sure this is turned on. Um, and I actually had that on already when I set up this PDF. Um, I should have should have showed you, but I, I, again, I, it was already turned on. So just keep that in mind. Um, to use the, the page break control tag, make sure HTML um, field to turn on in the PDF. Now, our second page doesn't have that floating um, page name there. Uh, it's got the nice big uh, list view um, on our landscape, so it's, it's easy to see. Uh, and then back to portrait. And that's um, how you can use page breaks in your core and universal PDF templates.